Now, this here's my boy, Nathan. He's special. Nate, be polite and say hello to Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi there, big guy. Very lifelike. Contrary to popular belief, I don't believe the owls are more than what they seem. Yet another burial ground for those sweet, addictive, not to mention cancer-inducing sticks of tobacco. I'm a huge fan. Nice view of the lake from here. It's Nathan, Sue's mentally disabled son. What you doing, big fella? Drawing. Oh yeah? What are you drawing? The nice red man. You mean Santa? No! The nice red man! Now what did I say about raising your voice at strangers? Sorry, Mama. I'll be nice. The red man is nice. Don't mind him. He gets so absorbed in his drawings thanks to that wild imagination of his. Just like his sister. Nah, he's stuck in his own little world. painting. It's signed L.M. I can smell something cooking. I can smell something cooking. Elk, by the looks of it. They're fairly common in Conwell Woods. So you wanted to ask me about Lily? Yeah. Do you mind telling me what happened when my grandfather came to see you? Well, he knocked on my door a few years after Lily had passed away. I didn't know Joseph too well myself, but I'd heard of him and the good he'd done for the other people around here. So I let him in. He started asking a bunch of questions about Lily, like if I was absolutely sure that she, that it was suicide. And what did you say? The truth, that she was depressed and, and had been for a long time. I had no doubts about what happened. All right. Anything else? Well, he was weirdly curious about her paintings. Lily painted? Yep. That's one of hers right there on the wall. I see. It's beautiful. So, in what way was he curious? He asked if Lily had painted anything odd or strange. I didn't really get what he was after, but I, I let him have a look at her work. He spent some time browsing through them, and then he wrote something down on a piece of paper, thanked me, and left. Huh. Any idea of what he could have seen? Not really. I had the paintings all lined up. Could have been any of them. Would you mind showing them to me? Well, I would if I could, but this is the only one I have left. I sold the rest many years ago to this weirdo art collector. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather? How he ended up in a wheelchair? Stroke, wasn't it? At least that's what I heard. Not necessarily. There are some divided opinions about it. Now that I think about it, that whole ordeal happened to him not long after he came here. How long? A week, maybe, at the most. I don't need to ask her about that. Mind telling me what Lily was like, Sue? I'd be happy to. She was Nathan's older sister by two years. Lily was like any girl growing up, normal, happy, talking about school, boys, and whatnot. And she and Nathan were close back then, always playing together in the woods. When Lily was 10, she started drawing, always doodling on just about anything she could get her hands on. We didn't have much, really, and so she used what she could. Once, I even caught her scribbling on toilet paper. <laughs> on her 12th birthday, we gave Lily a thick sketchbook with an assortment of pencils. She was ecstatic. That was the happiest I'd ever seen her. From that day, drawing became her life. Eventually, her art teacher at school helped her to get started with oil painting. When Lily was 15, something changed. At first, I thought it was just usual teen angst, but no, this was something different. She started going out, disappearing for long periods of time, 
She locked herself in when painting. She never used to do that. I tried everything. Counseling, support groups, antidepressants. Nothing worked. About a year later, she just gave up. And well, you know the rest. I'm sorry, Sue. That must have been unimaginable. Thanks, darling, but it's been a while now. I've learned to live with it. Does the name Charles Wade mean anything to you? Oh, he's some big-time businessman, ain't he? Yeah, he owns a large company. That about sums up what I know about the fella. What do you do to support the two of you? A little bit of this and that. Got me some cash saved up, too. Nathan helps out when he can. What happened to your husband, if you don't mind me asking? You could say... He didn't quite cope as well as I did with what happened to Lily. He got himself a death wish after what happened to her started drinking and getting into all sorts of trouble. Five years left for him in the joint now. Been there for 15. Man, that must be rough for you. Oh, we're doing just fine without him. Aren't we, Nate? Mama takes good care of us. Mama sure does. So, tell me about Lily's art. It used to be about cheerful things. Landscapes, animals, bright colors. But as she drifted further into depression, she started painting horrible things. Death and decay. And the last few pieces looked like something out of a nightmare. That's awful. Did Lily ever get any recognition for her art? Not really. Except from the guy I told you about who bought most of her paintings. Tell me about this art collector person. Rich, fancy looking, in his 50s or thereabouts. I'd say he'd be around 70 now if he's still alive. He knocked on that door one day with a wad of cash in his hand. $5,000. He wanted everything that Lily so much as touched with a brush. Huh, did he say why? Nope, but I got the feeling that most of that dough was paid so he could avoid any questions. I took the money. I still had Nathan to support. Did the stranger give you his name? No. Well, his face was far from forgettable, though. Big nose, bright blue eyes, looked black Irish. He had a thick black mane, turning gray, no beard. All right, Sue. Thanks. I'd rather just ask her about her daughter directly. Do you know what this key opens? Well, that's a bit of a weird question, ain't it? But no. Hey, Sue, do you recognize any of these men? Well, there's Joseph Rain. <laughs> Always so handsome. I had such a crush on him back in the day. And... No way. That's him. The man who bought the paintings. He's, he's much younger here, but there's no mistake in that hair and nose. Are you sure? I'm positive, little cat. That's the guy who walked into this cabin with five grand in cash. That's very helpful, Sue. Thanks. Ugh. Another question for the elusive Mr. Wade. <laughs> what do you think about this church? It's a good church. I go there from time to time. I bring Nate, too, when that boy needs the fear of God put into him. It was fun the last time, but nah. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back anytime.
Wade. Leave a message after the beep. I want to put a message in here, but I'm not sure what. I think I'll sleep on it and try to figure out something tomorrow. Hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? I don't see a reason to ask her about that. You've reached the rain, residence. Leave a message after the beep. Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her firstborn. It's a boy. Thankfully, he looks nothing like his father. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you'd like to come and visit. And what about your little Kathy? Maybe she wants to see the baby. Well, anyways, I hope to see you soon. All the best. Bye. You people make me sick. We're never coming back. Don't call, don't write. If you ever try to contact us, I will call the police. Joseph, you there? It's me, Cocky. Uh, it happened to me too. And I'm not going to tell any of those bastards. They got it all wrong. You're the only one I trust now. Just call me back as soon as you can. Hmm. I wonder who this cocky is. Mind if we talk for a bit? Not at all. Does the nickname cocky mean anything to you? Sounds vaguely familiar. It reminds me of the aviator call signs Joseph and his friends gave one another. Joseph was vigilante. I can't count the number of times he got into trouble for breaking the rules. To this day, I have no idea how he always managed to land on his feet. <laughs> Must be hereditary, given the things I've gotten away with. Every time I wake up, I am genuinely surprised that I'm not in jail. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad, dear. But to get back to the subject, you don't have any idea of who this cocky is? I'm afraid not, but the Air Force might be a good place to start. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long. It's getting late. I should head back to the city. Hey, you're still up. I was wondering when you'd show up. How did it go? Long story. I found out about some stuff that happened when I was a kid. Wow, what a mystery. So what's the plan now? I don't know yet, but I'll figure something out. What about this Charles Wade? You still haven't talked to him. And that strange bright picture you showed me? Those tapes? Listen, I know this guy. Eileen, relax. We can talk about it tomorrow, okay? Oh, it's way too late now. Oh, I couldn't possibly sleep now. I'm way too excited. Well, that makes one of us nighty. <sighs> Good night, cat. Hey, Kathy, wake up! Ugh, you are so lucky there are no sharp objects near this bed. Guess what? I got an idea. Please tell me it involves you taking a sabbatical. Haha, <laughs> so you found all this evidence, right? Pictures, tapes, and stuff? I guess. Why? Well, as you know, I have a computer. 
and I know this hacker guy, Dave, and... Oh, never mind. I'll just write you a note. You go back to sleep. Seriously, Eileen, sometimes I just marvel at how your brain works. I know, right? Are you sure you want to do this, Catherine? You still have time, if you think there's any chance you would change your mind. I'm sure, Doctor. Just get it out of me. But please, don't tell my mom. I'm sorry, but we have to do that. It's the law. It's none of her business. It's my choice to make. I have enough shit going on with her already. This would just add fuel to the fire. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. Fine. Let's just get this over with then. Right this way. <laughs> 